Yo, what is up guys, it's Pedro here. So today I have 10 day 2 or day 3 draft sleepers that the Redskins could consider getting that would help us out a lot. So these are going to be players mostly at positions that we are weak at, but a few at some stronger positions. So we'll first start out with a couple wide receivers, then we'll go to offensive tackle, tight end, and then a couple players on defense that could help contribute. So first we'll start off with wide receiver uh, we do need a wide receiver to compliment Terry, whether it be in the third round. I think if you got someone like Michael Pittman, KJ Hamler, someone like that in the third round, then I think you take them. But I'm going to be uh, letting you guys know about some names that we could go for in the fourth round or below. So name number one, Tyler Johnson, out of, uh, played for Minnesota last year, six foot one, 206 pounds. So he's a big guy, has super long arms and could help us right away. In 2019, had about 86 catches for 1,318 yards. Is a huge, big target, which is kind of the receiver that we're lacking because we got Terry McLaurin, who's kind of like the do-it-all receiver. And we got Steven Sims, slot receiver, quick, agile. We just need that big target. And Kelvin Harmon could be that, but we do need another guy. And I do think that Tyler Johnson could be that guy. Not very fast. Kind of reminds me of... A little bit of a better Kelvin Harmon coming out of the draft. Maybe kind of similar to him, but he did play at a better school. So I think Tyler Johnson's probably the better player out of the two coming out of college. And also, Kelvin Harmon was projected in like the fourth round or earlier even, but he slid down to the sixth round. So that's one receiver. The next receiver, and while I talk about the next receiver, you guys can look at his strengths and weaknesses. The next receiver is not too much of a sleeper, but a lot of people are overlooking him. It is Van Jefferson out of Florida. Van Jefferson is probably the one of the best route runners in this draft, not even out of the receivers not getting in the first round. Just in general, I think he's the second or third best route runner in this draft. Great, uh, decent speed to had about 700 yards, almost 700 yards last year, six touchdowns. So I think he's a great player and can help uh, Dwayne Haskins out a lot. And I think if he's there, him or KJ Hill in the fourth round, then I think you could try to get, um, one of them, uh, because we just do need a receiver to compliment Terry. But I do think that the fourth round is probably a better option instead of the third round, unless there's one of those really, really elite guys available there. So next, so Van Jefferson, good option, not too much of a sleeper, but probably can get him in the fourth round. And if he's there in the fifth round, no doubt about it, take him. So next is Devin Duverney. Um, played for Texas last year. Five, so he's a small guy, kind of like Steven Sims. 5'10", 200 pounds. Um, also has some pretty long arms. And yeah, he's small, speedy guy. Um, overall, a pretty good player. And I do think it would be, uh, he would also be another great weapon to add for Haskins. Uh, he can make some great catches in the red zone good red zone threat go check out his highlights i'll leave a few of the players highlights in the description if i remember i'll try to do so and there's other another receiver that i forgot his name but who also plays for texas who is six foot six and a big target in the red zone who could also be a sleeper uh all these receivers aren't gonna I don't know. This receiving class is so deep that some of these guys might up, end up going sixth, fifth round, and usually they would be going third, fourth round. So I do think that uh, any of these guys fall to the fifth round, I think we should consider getting him. Uh, Devin Duverney, very fast, like I said. Agile can also break through some tackles. And yeah, 439, 40-yard dash, so he has legit speed and can kind of be like a Steven Sims, uh, a little bit bigger. And yeah, so next guy is uh, offensive tackle Alex Taylor. He's probably one of the biggest sleepers in this draft. He's one of those raw talents, played for South Carolina State last year, six foot eight, 308 pounds. Didn't have much experience in college, only starting 22 games. But it's one of those guys that if you get um, him the right coaching and uh, the right development, he can be one of those sleeper picks that ends up being a Pro Bowl guy who gets drafted fifth round, fourth round, or later. This guy, I seriously don't know what where he's going to get drafted. I, I don't think he's going to get drafted as early as third round, but I have seen that on some mock drafts. I really think it's going to be that 
middle of fourth round to sixth round, honestly. We'll see. But play basketball and football in college. Six foot eight, three hundred pounds, like I said. He's very good in pass protection. And his yeah, 40 yard dash 5.09 is not bad, especially for his size. I think this would be a good option. I s the thing is though, I don't know if we should he should be the only guy we draft. I do think probably drafting an O tackle in the third round if one of those guys like Driscoll, um uh Sadiq Charles are available, then you try to get them in the fourth round. But if not, I think Alex Taylor in the fifth round um uh would be a great player his technique needs a little bit of work like I said though he's a raw talent who definitely can develop into a good starter with the right coaching so I think this would be a good pick in my opinion and yeah the next pick um I'm gonna leave uh, Alex Taylor up here but the next pick is Ben Barch who played at St. John's last year six foot six 309 pounds um He's a, also another one of these raw talents, uh, needs to work on his technique and stuff, but I think with the right coaching can be a late round sleeper that succeeds. He can play both tackle spots, spot, sorry, which is beneficial for us because uh, if we get a replacement for Trent Williams, that's not Ben Barch. He can be the backup for uh, that replacement, or he could potentially, if he becomes good enough, he can... Uh, replace Morgan Moses, so I do like him. So next player is Colby Parkinson, who played at Stanford last year, who could be a tight end that goes around the fourth, fifth round. It really depends on when Cole Komet gets drafted. If he does not get drafted in the second round, and he gets maybe he's Cole Komet's there with the Bengals take him at their first third round pick, or we take him, or something like that. I think. That's just going to have a domino effect, and a lot of tight ends are going to be available that wouldn't earn. A lot of tight ends would be available in the fifth round, maybe Thaddeus Moss. Guys like this, Colby Parkinson, is probably a fourth to sixth round guy. Six foot seven, 250 pounds. Didn't have the best year last year. Four seven, 40 yard dash, not too bad, especially for a guy of his uh, size. But he didn't, he struggled a, li a bit last year, but that's because of his quarterback play um so last year uh he caught one touchdown in 12 starts uh 48 receptions for 590 almost 590 yards and he did not have good quarterback play so if he had better a better quarterback I do think that he could have had a way better year and I think a Haskins would be a good quarterback for him Right here, you see what they say right here is prospect grade. Good backup who could become starter. So I think that's kind of what we need. And I think that we have a lot of those players on our team right now. Like Logan Thomas might be able to become a good starter. I think the best ideal situation is us drafting a tight end in the third or fourth round. Depending, I think Trent, a Trent Williams deal is going to get done uh, around the draft. Maybe we get a second or third round pick or multiple uh, mid-round picks, like multiple fourths, maybe a third and two-fourths, or uh, two-fourths and two-fifths, or something weird like that. Uh, if we get something like that, maybe we draft a tight end in the fourth and fifth, one that's uh, more polished and can start right away, and the other that's a developmental piece. So the next tight end is, I really like this guy um, out of UCLA. Devin Asiasi, sorry if I'm uh, mispronouncing that, but six foot three, 260 pounds, uh, 47, 40 yard dash. Last year had about 44 catches, 640 yards, and four touchdowns. So balled out last year, and that was his really first year of actually playing. I think before that he had nine catches, if I uh, remember correctly, but he's one of those raw talents that definitely needs a good coach that can help him develop. A lot of these guys are. A lot of these guys aren't going to help contribute right away. There's a couple that will, like Van Jefferson and some of the other receivers. But positions like this, he might come and help right away. But I do think that he's one of those guys that uh, is going to take a while, but he can help um, and maybe start on our team. I don't know. He's kind of all over the place when it comes to the draft board. Maybe could be drafted if some team goes crazy and drafts him the fourth. Or he could be as low as sixth round, in my opinion. Some team might be crazy and get him in the third round. I don't know. I've seen some people rank him as the 15th tight end. Some as like the eighth. So we'll see. 
But overall, I think the only red flag is I read he had some weight issues in college keeping up the weight. But besides that, I think it's a good uh, sleeper pick with not too much risk who could uh, who has a lot of upside. If you want I, his highlights, I'm going to leave a link in the description for this one, definitely. Uh, but he's a stud. He's he's an absolute stud. So I don't want to make this video too long, so I'm going to keep on going. But go ahead and watch his highlights. So Neville Clark is probably going to be a sixth-round pick. But I think uh, getting one of those guys at cornerback uh, that might not compete for a starting job right away, but might be one of those guys that is a backup for the first year and develops into a good starter in the coming years. And I think Neville Clark would be a pretty good fit for us. Uh, needs to work on his tackling, but he's able to erase high point throws. So I do like him at UCF. Uh, I'm not going to talk about him too much because this video is getting a little longer. But some other cornerbacks that I like, Lamar Jackson, uh, AJ Green, uh, Lavert Hill. So th those are some of the guys I like. Uh, but yeah, Neville Clark's probably going to be a late round guy. If we can get him, I think it would be great. Uh, it might not help out the first year when it comes to starting, but I think eventually he could become a good player. So next guy is Julian Blackman safety. This guy's probably a fifth round ish guy who maybe you know late or fourth to sixth round guy. I don't really know necessarily, but this is a guy that is perfect for the Redskins because he can help uh push Sean Davis and help him compete, which is perfect. He uh he six foot around six foot one ish, measured at six foot at the combine. Um. Uh, Gained some weight because he moved from cornerback to safety. Uh, he gained that weight when it was in his junior year to get ready for his senior year when he switched. And he had about four interceptions last. He had four inter sorry four interceptions last year and pretty good overall. I think we need a guy that not not necessarily is going to start over Sean Davis right away, but a guy that can push him and uh, battle with him and maybe both of them play a lot. Uh, in the in Jack Del Rio and Ron Rivera's defense. So one more or yeah, one more guy for that I'm gonna be talking about today is Logan Wilson out of Wyoming. Really good measurables, six foot two, two hundred forty pounds as a linebacker, and a four six as a linebacker, especially a six two and two forty is pretty good. And he had four hundred tackles in his collegiate career and about ten interceptions. So I don't really this guy also might be drafted in the fourth round. We will see. But this is one of these guys that honestly uh, could fit well with our linebackers. And I don't think we need to draft a linebacker very early just because we got Cole Holcomb. We got Thomas Davis, at least for this year. Uh, and you got Ruben Foster, Sean Dion Hamilton. But getting another guy, especially late round guy, is not a bad idea. Especially when you have someone like Kyle Smith running your draft board. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please smash like button. Let me know any draft sleepers that you think I missed and any ones uh, you think are gonna that we should target. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Check all my links in the description. Probably have the highlights there. Peace.